As a software developer, working with data is your bread and butter. Reading data, writing data, serializing, deserializing, you have to do it all the time. There are different ways to serialize data, and today I want to talk about binary serialization of data in C Sharp. So let's get started. First, let's talk briefly about why we should serialize data in binary form in the first place, and what the alternatives are. Most people will immediately think of two, XML and JSON. These formats have the advantage of being easy to read, meaning that you can simply open such files with a text editor and view the contents. This can be a great help when debugging, for example. On the other hand, such files also take up a lot of memory, partly because the properties of a class are always specified by name, whereas in XML you have either an element with a start and end tag, or an attribute that must also be specified by name. This increases the final file size. However, if you serialize data in binary format, you can write the data as efficiently as possible and thus keep the file size smaller. The disadvantage is, of course, that you cannot simply open such binary files with a text editor and view the contents. You need to be aware of this when deciding how to persist your data. If we decide to serialize our data in binary format, there are a few important things we need to keep in mind. Firstly, we need to work with versioning. We can't assume that the data model we want to write will never change in the future. As we extend our software, we will need to continually adapt our data model, which will of course affect data that is already persisted. We need to make sure that files created before the change can still be read when the model changes. The second is the order in which the data is written. For example, with XML data, the order of the data does not matter, it is simply a matter of whether an element exists or not, as it is addressed by name. In binary format, the data is written in a specific order and must be read in exactly the same order. Thirdly, when I implement the writer, I always have to think about how to read the data back in later. So I recommend always implementing the reader first and then the writer. You might think that it makes more sense to implement the writer first, because you have to write the data before you can read it. But no, first the reader, then the writer. I call this the reader first approach. But now it's time for an example. I have a C Sharp project in Visual Studio where I already have a person class that has some simple properties of different types. I have also already created a unit test project with a test class. Here I will be able to easily try out the serializer, and I have created a method to create some person objects to get a list of such objects for testing. Now let's start with the serializer. I already have a person serializer class and here I create a serialize persons and a deserialize persons method. And as I already said, I will start with the reader, so the deserialize method. Here I simply use a memory stream and pass it to a binary reader. We will now write the reader as we expect to receive the data, which will help us to write the data correctly when implementing the writer. The first information we will read here is a version number, we will see later what we need it for. Then we read the number of people stored, this is important so we know how often we have to try to read a person object. Next, we create a list of people into which we add the people we have read. Then we build a for loop in which we count up to the number of people we have read so far. Within the loop we then read the information for each person, the ID, first name, surname, date of birth, gender, and country. We use the read functions of the binary reader to do this. We can see that there is no read datetime function, for example. Instead, we read the ticks as a loan and create a datetime object. The gender, which is an enum, is simply read as an integer. Then we just need to add the person object to the list. Finally, we need to return the list. And with that, the reader is finished. Now let's look at the writer. Again, we create a memory stream which we then pass to a binary writer. Now that we have implemented the reader, it is easy to implement the writer. First we need to write the current version number, I use a constant for this. It is a good idea to use a comment to briefly describe the version. Next, we write the number of people. Then we do a for each loop over all the people and write the individual properties of each person, exactly in the order in which we previously specified them in the reader. Don't forget to write the ticks for the date of birth. The gender, which is an enum, is written as an integer. Finally, we create a byte array from the memory stream and return it. Now that we have both the reader and the writer ready, let's put them to the test. I'll just create a unit test where I serialize a list of people and then deserialize it to see if it's the same. I also write the byte array to a file so that I can reuse it later. And if we run the test in debug mode, we see that the original list of people matches the one we get back after serializing and deserializing. But now we come to the interesting part. We now extend the person class so that it no longer has a country property, but instead has an address property, which is of type address, a class I also define in this file. Of course, we have to make some adjustments now, first and foremost to our serializer. Here we first increment the version number and describe this version in the comment. 
Then we go to the deserializer and remove the line where we read the string for the country property. This is because we now need to distinguish whether we are reading a file from version 1 or a newer version. If it is version 1, we still read the string containing the country, but now store it in the country property of the address object. If it is a newer version, we first read a bool value that tells us if there is address information, if so, we read the property of the address and store it in the address object. We also need to adapt the writer, but this is a bit easier because we're always writing in the latest version, so we don't need to do any version checks. In other words, we remove the line where the country is written. Instead, we write the bool value indicating that there is address information, then we write the individual properties of the address object. The test data also needs to be adjusted. I filled in the address information for each person except the first one who has no address. I then create a second test that again serializes the list of people, writes it to a file, and deserializes it again so that we can see if the serializer and deserializer are working correctly. A quick run of the test in debug mode confirms that our adjusted serializer works. As a final, ultimate test, I try to read a file written with the version 1 serializer with the adapted version 2 serializer. This simulates the case where an older file is to be read after the serializer has been adapted. We jump through the serializer here and see that the number 1 is read as the version and accordingly only the string for the country is read. This means that we get address objects where only the country property is filled. And that was it. So we see that it is relatively easy to implement binary serialization with versioning. What do you think? Do you often need to serialize data in binary format? Or do you try to avoid it? Do you version the data as well? Let me know in the comments. With that, thank you for watching. Please subscribe and like, see you and hear from you in the next video.